A study that monitored 40 bearded dragons for movement, temperature and acceleration has found that the faster lizards were more likely to die than the slower ones. The lizards were fitted with special trackers for the research. Christopher Wilde is a University of Melbourne ecologist who carried out the study. Hi there, Christopher. Hey, how are you doing? I'm really good, thank you. So can you start by talking about these trackers first of all? How did you attach them to the lizards? Well, first I brought one of the trackers with me. It's this guy right here, and it's a really small device if you can see it on the screen. But we had a, uh, a problem where we had to attach these onto the animals because you can't just glue them on. So I became a bit of a tailor during my PhD where each one of these trackers were customly attached on to these lizards by using a vest. So I measured their necks, I measured their bellies, and then the tracker would sit flush on their back like this. So they're made to measure for individual bearded dragons? Th that is it. I became a bit of a seamstress, <laughs> making sure that I got the necks and the bellies right. Wonderful. Uh, so what were you trying to find out in this study then, Christopher? So with lizards and other ectotherms or cold-blooded animals, they rely on temperature to regulate every part of their lives. And what we were interested in were looking at how temperature drives their behaviors in the wild and if we can relate that to survival. So why are the fastest dragons the least likely to survive? This is what you found, because you'd think the opposite would be true, wouldn't you? Right, because you would think, oh, if you're fast like the, the leopard and the cheetah situation, uh, it would be beneficial to escape your predators. Well, things are complex in nature. Uh, in the case for these lizards, uh, with adults, because we were only looking at adults, um, maybe they rely on something maybe like crypsis or just blending into their environments, um, whereas sprint speed or, or running ability might be really important when they're smaller. So. We need to, uh, I, this is why I have a job, we need to go back out and look at more things. Um, maybe we look at the little ones and see how uh, sprint speed is related to their survival. Okay, and what else did you find out about the lives of bearded dragons in this research? Well, we, we got to, it was a really cool opportunity to, to like test these uh, laboratory assumptions of, of, of fitness and how they actually translate in the wild. So that was the first really cool thing. And then the second thing, these lizards will uh, reverse their sex. So the main project was looking at how sex reversal uh, impacts the behaviors of these lizards, looking at movement ecology to acceleration to thermal biology. Hmm. Putting a tracker on the back of the lizards though, Christopher, are you influencing their behavior? It looks small, but does it have an effect on the animals that are wearing it compared to the ones that are tracker free? Well, I, I think in my, in my business, we, we do as much as we can to minimize uh, their behavior. So we considered their ecology, so we know that they use burrows, we know that they climb up trees. So we did uh, the minimal amount of, of manipulation on, on them. Um, so the, the trackers were roughly uh, less than 5% of their body weights. Each one was uniquely tapered to each lizard and was camouflaged based off their color pattern. Mm. But again, at the end of the day, we are tracking them, so we have to have some kind of manipulation to look into their everyday lives. Yeah, and as trackers get smaller, are you planning to use them on other animals? Well, it depends on funding. I feel like every scientist says this, but I would love to continue the, the lizard business of looking at fine scale behaviors and really linking their thermal biology to their um, overall daily decisions.